Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with grilled hoisin beef. That's right, I was originally going to call this grilled Mongolian beef, since we're using a very similar marinade to our Mongolian pork chop. But I ended up going with grilled hoisin beef, because the final product really didn't come out that similar. Plus, and probably more importantly, I realized I'm really not sure what Mongolian food is. And pretty much everything I know is from that Marco Polo TV show. But anyway, regardless of what we call this, it is a very simple marinade and devastatingly effective, especially when used with the always amazing skirt stick. So with that, let's go ahead and start the marinade by not surprisingly adding some hoisin sauce to a bowl. And by the way, if you're not exactly sure what this stuff is, join the club. Nobody's sure. But I will try to find out a little more info and include that in the blog post. And then to that, we're going to want to add some vinegar. And I'm actually using a dark Chinese vinegar here, but almost literally any vinegar is going to work. And then we'll also drizzle in about a tablespoon of soy sauce, as well as a nice squirt of hot sauce, which means I don't have to add any cayenne. Well, at least not on camera. But anyway, let's continue by adding a little bit of sesame oil, which we always want to be careful with because a little bit goes a long way. And then let's also toss in some freshly grated ginger, as well as some crushed or very finely minced garlic. And then we'll go ahead and finish up with our last three ingredients, which will include some brown sugar. And I'm using dark brown sugar because that's what I had around, but I do usually use the light. So either one will work, and that's going to be up to you. And then we will finish this off by adding some freshly ground black pepper, as well as a nice big pinch of salt. And we'll take our whisk and give that a mix. And that's it. As soon as all our ingredients are thoroughly combined, our marinade is marinade. And we will simply set that aside while we move on to prep our beef. Which is going to be so easy because we're using skirt steak. And there it is. Which as I like to joke is called skirt steak because it looks exactly like a scarf. And other than cutting this into some easier to handle pieces, there's really no prep involved. Alright, if we wanted we could trim off some of that white fat you see. But we don't want to. That's going to add flavor, moisture, and richness. And by the way, it really doesn't matter where you cut. Okay, the exact length of these pieces isn't going to matter, since they're all about the same thickness, which means we're all going to cook about the same time. And then what we'll do once our beef is cut is transfer that into our marinade, and make sure, of course, it's coated very thoroughly on both sides. So we will transfer our pieces of skirt steak in, and toss those around with our tongs, until we have full confidence those are evenly coated. At which point we will cover this with some plastic. Because what we're going to want to do is pop this in the fridge and marinate it for anywhere between 2 and 12 hours. So I went ahead and wrapped that up and popped it in the fridge. And if you must know, I let my marinate for exactly 4 hours. At which point I pulled it out to get it ready for the grill. And what that means is we'll pull it out of the marinade and lay it down on some paper towels. Because we're going to wipe off some of this excess marinade before it hits the grill. And other than this little bit of a wipe down, that's really all the pre-grill prep we need to do, unless you're going to re-season this. But for me, generally there's enough salt in the marinade. So I'm not going to add any additional seasoning, but of course that's going to be up to you. And then what we'll do once that excess has been brushed off, assuming that our coals are ready, is head out back and grill these up. Which I'm going to suggest we do over a very hot, natural charcoal fire. And we will place our meat down on the grill, where we're going to cook it for approximately 4 to 5 minutes per side, or until somewhere between medium rare and medium. And by the way, I can't stress enough how you need to wait until your coals are white hot before you put the meat on. Okay, we never ever want to put meat down on a grill where the coals are still on fire. Okay, the flames you see here are from juices and fat dripping off the meat. That's okay. At least a little bit is. But if you try to cook meat over coals that are actually still on fire, your food is basically going to taste like gasoline. So yes, that does explain why your father-in-law's hamburgers taste like that. And also one other quick tip. If the flames from the fat are getting to be too much, just simply close your lid when you're not moving them around, and those flames will die down. But anyway, like I said, we're going to cook these for about 4-5 to five minutes per side. And of course, quite possibly the thinner pieces might finish a little early, as this one did here. But generally, these pieces will finish within a minute or two of each other. And if you are going by internal temperature, which is never a bad idea, I generally recommend something between 130 and 135, which is going to be a little closer to medium than medium rare. Because it's been my experience with skirt steak, if you cook it too rare, it can be chewy. But of course, having said that, exact doneness is up to you. You are, after all, the Omar Sharif of how long to cook your hoisin beef. But anyway, somehow, someway, we'll cook that between medium rare and medium, and we'll head back inside to feast our eyes on what may be the most beautiful, and certainly juiciest, plate of grilled beef our guests have ever seen.
In fact, while I'm letting this rest for a couple minutes, I'm going to transfer it to a clean serving plate just so you can watch me slowly pour over the accumulated juices. Oh yeah. I mean, that's borderline not safe for work. So we will definitely save and pour over any and all juices, as well as possibly garnishing with a few extra sesame seeds. And then last but not least, a little bit of sliced green onion. And that's it. What I'm calling grilled hoisin beef is done. And please do not let that boring generic name fool you. This stuff really was amazingly flavorful, which is no surprise because skirt steak just by itself is super flavorful. But when combined with this marinade, with its subtly sweet, kind of salty, sort of funky flavors, everything gets elevated to a whole other level of deliciousness. And I'm not sure if something can have a simple and complex flavor at the same time, but if that's possible, this could be it. And of course, it would not be a skirt steak video if I didn't mention you have to cut this stuff across the grain, otherwise it's really tough and chewy. Okay, so find those easy to identify meat fibers and make sure your knife is cutting across those fibers and not the same direction which, as you may be able to notice, is how I'm doing it here. And I would have been more than happy to finish this video just eating this off the plate. But then I remembered I had coconut rice to serve under this. So I sliced some up and served it on that for the final shots. And if that looks like it was an incredible combination, well, I have to compliment you on how perceptive you are. Because it really was. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling grilled hoisin beef. Above and beyond showing you a really easy and delicious marinade recipe. I hope this video inspires you to go find some skirt steak. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the all-time ultimate cuts of meat for the grill. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>